Lucky Land Casino asking people what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? Lucky? In line at the deli, I guess? Aha, in my dentist's office. More than once, actually. Do I have to say? Yes, you do. In the car before my kids' PTA meeting. Really? Yes. Excuse me, what's the weirdest place you've gotten lucky? I never win and tell. Well, there you have it. You can get lucky anywhere, playing at LuckyLandSlots.com. Play for free right now. Are you feeling lucky? No purchase necessary. Void prohibited by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Judy was boring. Hello. Then Judy discovered ChumbaCasino.com. It's my little escape. Now Judy's the life of the party. Oh, baby. Mama's bringing home the bacon. Whoa. Take it easy, Judy. <laughs> The Chumba Life is for everybody. So go to ChumbaCasino.com and play over a 100 casino-style games. Join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. Void were prohibited by law. 18 plus terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Do you want to hear my cloned voice spoken with artificial intelligence? Stay tuned. This is Beer in Front, part of the Odd Pods Media Network. Sometimes the beer in front of you is the best one yet. I'll talk about some old school beers that maybe you've forgotten about, some new beers that have the potential to be a classic. I'll also talk to various people around the beer world and get their stories all about beer. That's Beer in Front, and it's coming up now. Welcome to the August 15th edition of Beer in Front. I'm your host, Dave Zalatoris, and Beer in Front is a proud member of the Odd Pods Media Network. I sat down over the weekend and talked with Joe and James over at Go Brewing in Naperville, Illinois. Go is the first non-alcoholic brewery in the state of Illinois, and later in the show, I'll have a few of their beers as well. All right, that's enough of that nonsense. I think my job is safe as a podcast host until they work out the bugs with AI. But that was supposed to be a clone of my voice. And I recorded a long, rambling, you know, text of me reading. And that is supposed to be me. But I don't think it sounds like me. So for the near future, you're stuck with Dave. For those people that grew up in Chicago and you're in my age bracket, I could do an AI thing and do like if you remember Clutch Cargo that used to run on WGN TV early in the mornings here. I could do some AI thing with just superimposing my face and have my AI lips move. And I could do like a Clutch Cargo version of Beer in Front. The interview with Joe and James went well. I was supposed to go visit them, but unfortunately, as you know, I work for an airline and some heavy suitcases did a number on my back this week, so I had to do it remotely from home because my back has been killing me, but thankfully, whoever invented the massage gun, I owe everything to that person because that has been a godsend. So I'm not missing any more time or anything like that. I'll be back and good to go soon. But I definitely will have to stop over at Go Brewing and visit Joe and James in person. That sounds like a great tap room. The pictures that I saw online are really good. And I can't wait for you to listen to the interview. So I'm going to stop rambling on and let's talk about some beer. There's been a lot of beer news in the last couple of weeks. Locally here in Chicago, Low Res Brewing, they're going to close after seven years in Pilsen. The founder says the brewery never rebounded from the pandemic and Low Res is going to close on September 3rd. That's too bad. They always put out some really good stuff. There was a really good article on good beer hunting and I'll leave the link in the show notes on how a lot of craft breweries are coming out with light lagers that are trying to get some of the macro money. I mean, you saw it with Montucky cold snacks that I talked to a couple months ago, how they're really exploding. So a lot of new craft breweries are coming out with good light lagers. So check that link out over on good beer hunting. 
a lot of people are upset with toppling Goliath because a couple weeks ago they had presidential hopeful Ron DeSantis there for an event. So a lot of people are just not going to have toppling Goliath beers anymore. And before you get on me about cancel culture, I have two words for you, Bud Light. More brewing is coming out with two beers in cahoots with Jepson's Malort. They have a Maybach and a Pilsner. So for my suburban friends, please somebody hook me up with some of this Malort more. And further blurring the lines between alcoholic beverages and non-traditional alcoholic beverages Dunkin Donuts is coming out with a spiked iced coffee and spiked iced tea I'm not sure but I didn't think you could put caffeine and alcohol together in a commercially available product I talked on YouTube a couple months ago about Jack and Coke or as I call it the Lemmy and that's the caffeine free version. So I'm not sure. I don't think these are going to have caffeine. But if you want an iced coffee with a little kick, you could check out new Duncan's Spiked. In really big news, Anheuser Busch has sold off eight of its craft brands to Canadian cannabis company Tilray. Included in the sale is Shock Top, Breckenridge, Blue Point, Red Hook. Highball Energy, Widmer Brothers, 10 Barrel, and Square Mile Cider. This was an $85 million all-cash deal. I need to look into this and see, did they take a loss? Because I know they were buying breweries left and right years ago, so I wonder if they took a hit on this sale. But these new eight breweries are joining up with Tilray. Goose Island officially announced the variants that are going to be available in 2023 for the Bourbon County brand stout family. You're going to have your original one. There's one that's an Eagle Rare two-year reserve stout. They're going to have a two-year cask finished with Angel's Envy, a Bananas Foster one that looks pretty interesting, One that's called Backyard Stout, and then, of course, the Proprietor. So that's your official lineup for Bourbon County Brand Stout in 2023. Hey, you there. We've got a question for you. Are you tired of clickbait stories and the loudest voices driving discussions in culture and entertainment? If so, I'm Dylan. I'm Kendall. And I'm Corey. And we host the podcast, From the Middle. We're middle-class guys living in the middle of America, in the middle chapters of our lives with points of view somewhere in the middle. We take a more reasonable and centrist approach in our discussions covering genres like comedy, culture, entertainment, and interviews with really interesting folks like business owners, comic creators, doctors, news anchors, New York Times best-selling illustrators, professional stand-up comics, and more. We really value a relaxed and conversational podcast, one that we hope is so fun and laid back, you'll forget you're not actually hanging out with us. So search at From the Mid Pod, just like it sounds, or check us out everywhere you can find podcasts. When you're done listening to this show, head over to From the Middle and check them out. Always a great show. Before Sarah discovered ChumbaCasino.com, she enjoyed chamomile tea. Come on, big jackpot. And being in PJs by six. Let's go. The new fun Sarah Woo-hoo! often thinks about the old boring Sarah. Yes. And wonders if that Sarah ever really existed. Chumba Casino has over 100 casino style games. So join today and play for free for your chance to redeem some serious prizes. No purchase necessary. Void were created by law. 18 plus. Terms and conditions apply. See website for details. Non alcoholic beers aren't just for dry January. Sometimes you want the taste of a few beers and not feel like you were hit by a truck the next morning after some 9% Imperial IPA. Go Brewing is the first non-alcoholic brewery in the state of Illinois. They are located at 1665 Quincy Avenue 
in Naperville, Illinois. Joining me today is Joe and James from Go Brewing. Gentlemen, how are you this morning? We are doing very well. Thanks for having us on. Oh, no problem. Yeah, thank you. Most people in 2020 started making sourdough, but you guys opened up a brewery. You went big. What was the thoughts behind Go Brewing? Yeah, I'll, I'll start and then James can jump in. Uh, I know the website says 2020, and that in fact is true when we kind of really started the idea. And I met, I met James, but um, what really that the ideation from the, the brewery started then we, we then created an incubator in my garage in Naperville and we experimented for at least a year. Or so pretty much the, the most, most of 2022 was experimenting in my garage, creating a brewery in the garage and then really kind of developing recipes and, uh, and getting the product right. Cause we knew that was really important. And the brewery, I, you know, I say it really opened in January of this year because that's where we started making our own beer here. Non-alcoholic beers, they've come a long way from our parents, Sharps, and O'Doul's. What are some of the styles that you brew over at Go? I mean, it's it's just about everything that you'd find at any other craft brewery. And that was one of the very first conversations we had is that we wanted to be a um, authentic local craft brewery with a tap room and making a range of different beers. That being said, when we were first coming up with the recipes in uh, Joe's garage, we focused on a narrow range of kind of uh, what we consider like classic styles for like an American uh, craft brewery. So, you know, stout, IPA, um, we had a wit beer. What else was in that list? Uh, we did throw a hazy in there because we needed to have <laughs> a hazy in today's Everybody market. Everybody needs to have um, a hazy, yeah. Yeah. Oh, and the Pilsner, of course. Yeah, which is kind of my baby. Um and, uh, we started off there kind of a range of different styles and flavors, uh, but fairly basic, you know, and, and, and recognizable by everybody. And since then we've, um, added in the sour, uh, f- different fruit beers, um, adding different flavors into, uh, beers like chocolate cherry stout. Um, we just did a, um, a lemon shandy and we've been able to really take that knowledge that we gained from the, uh, R and D process and really expand it pretty successfully in all these different, um, styles. Now, you know, I think we have at least 11 different beers on, on tap right now. And we've, we've created over 20 different varieties. And one of the things to put in, in perspective, Dave, if you look at untapped, for example, and you look at some of these breweries that have been around for, let's call it like five years or so. And you look at the quantity of beers that we created because of the fact that we have our own brewery here, we're making things on site. We have our own canning line and pasteurizing line. We have our own lab here. James has has done a tremendous job being able to innovate, try new things. And then the beauty about not alcoholic beer is we're able to then test the market online very quickly and iterate very quickly. So then when we are now in distribution, we know not only what we think is going to sell, we know fact sheet what will sell because we have that online experience. The fact sheet that was sent over from Madeline says that when you brew, you have a process that it does not take the alcohol out of your beers. What type of process is involved when you're brewing? Oh, that's great because uh, it's not any special <laughs> process. Okay. It's more of um, kind of taking the traditional process and just designing the recipe in a way that we are not creating a large amount of fermentable uh, sugars. So, you know, the the whole, what makes brewing brewing is the idea that you're taking grains or whatever um, uh, substance that needs uh, starches that need to be converted into sugars that can then be fermented by yeast and turned into alcohol. And what we're using is traditional ingredients, traditional, you know, grains, malted barley, and um, we're manipulating the process using all traditional equipment in order to create a beer that we then ferment to no more than uh, you know 0.5 percent alcohol, uh, so that you still get all of the flavors and characters that a you know fully fermented beer would get um, using the same ingredients, just uh, you know less alcohol. That process does that 
make it easier or difficult when coming up with a new recipe or a new style? Uh, difficult, definitely. Um, you know, having a machine that removes the alcohol could make it very easy to dial in exactly the uh, final, you know, ABV of a product. You know, we have very little wiggle room, which is, as you know, Joe said, why we have a, a lab. And part of that lab is not only just quality control, but it's also making sure that we are within specifications of that 0.5. Now, if we're making normal beer, 0.5 would just be an error margin, right? But for us, our error margin is like 0.02, you know, <laughs> we, we can't have anything that's going to be yeah. 0.5 or, or above. So we're very um, strict about making sure that everything stays um, below that, which means being very careful about managing our, our recipes, our fermentations, um, are the timing of, um, ingredients and, um, you know, transferring the beer around throughout the process. It does make it very difficult. It means a lot more attention to detail. It means, um, being very intentional and careful about everything we, that we do. But, you know, that's part of what kind of makes it fun. And it's, um, also, I think what gives it a, a more authentic character than if we were just pushing it through, uh, a filter or, you know, cooking off uh, some of the alcohol. I mentioned O'Doul's and Sharps earlier. And I think for many people, that's still the perception they have in their heads when it comes to non-alcoholic beer. Has it been difficult for both of you to try to change the mindset, if you will, of just the average person and, you know, not just go, but there's so many companies out there that are coming up with some, you know, really solid NA beers. How difficult has it been to change the mindset of people? Uh, for, from my experience and what I've seen in most, most people have tried some sort of alternative to O'Doul's, uh, at least that company into here and we don't really see a lot of chatter online but maybe it's because it's from customers that have had a bad experience and are Mm -hmm. conversing with us so it's it's more of it's more of educating and uh pushing a consumer to give it a try that's into alcohol that may not want to try non-alcoholic beer is the can be the the challenge just to just to let them know, like, hey, just give this a taste. There's no harmful effect here whatsoever. In fact, it will hydrate you. There's a lot of benefits to it. But I mean, there, there's been times where we've been at like beer fest and people will walk up to us and no look at us as like we're at a sober conference and we're trying to give them beer. And I'm like, no, this is like, you'll be okay here. And, and that's the, that's the part that we want to be like, hey, this isn't a binary thing. Like we are, none of us here are teetotalers. All of us drink in moderation as, as owners and partners and go. And we believe that you can, you can have a, a moderate life. Like a lot of, in fact, 55% of our customer base wants to reduce their alcohol consumption. They're not abstaining from, from alcohol, but that percentage that just like has something in their head, like they're, uh, they're doing something against, um, alcoholic gear or they are like, somehow go in like it's just against their character and moral stature to try not alcoholic beer. That's the challenge that we have sometimes. But what's kind of cool about our tap room is that we have guest beers on tap. And as soon as we see someone order a guest beer, we're like, hey, why don't you try one of ours? Because at least in their mind now, there's it's implanted that the taste can be good. Mm-hmm. And then one day when they might wake up and they might not feel like having a hangover the, the next weekend, they're we're on their uh, consideration set. And then you could also, you know, I saw the guest list that you have. If somebody's picking up a noon whistle or something like that, hey, if you like this, why don't you try this? It's, you know, similar style. A hundred percent. And that's the beauty about what James has been able to brew here is like our first question is what kind of beer do you like? Because, you know, if the reality is if someone doesn't like the taste of beer, they're probably not going to like our beer because it tastes like beer. Like, yeah. but it, but some, some people do say that I'll lead them toward the sour beer or, you know, something else that may not have the kind of, uh, natural or the, the beer flavor that kind of everyone knows. Now your team won two medals this year in the best of craft brewing awards. That's pretty impressive for such a new brewery, but it also sets the bar really high for the future. How do you plan on topping that in the future? 
winning more words. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> go ahead. I was just going to say that uh, you know, there's um, um, uh, some really big awards out there, uh, uh, especially from my perspective on the brewing side. You think about um, the World Beer Cup and the Grand American Beer Fest, which is coming up um, next month, and those, you know, no always uh, some of these awards don't always get the larger attention of the uh, you know general population, but uh, for brewers, you know, who I think can be a large target market for us are people who are, who are stuck in the industry and you're, you're out beer all the time. It's a great, uh, it's great to have these op- kind of options, you know, there's NA options that allow you to kind of continue in this lifestyle that we all live while, you know, being a little more, more healthy. But yeah, there's, there's plenty of places uh, for us to go with, you know, a- accolades that we might um, uh, be able to acquire. I'm going to ask this question for both of you and, I know asking which one is your favorite would be like asking what's your favorite dog or kid. But if I were to go to your houses right now and open up the fridge, what go brewing beer is in the the shelf of your refrigerator door? That that would be a, a bad way to go about it because I drank all of my favorite here, but but I totally get to your question, and it's it's one of those things that it's. I mean, to your point, it's hard to narrow it down like kind of they're all every time they come on i'm like this is my favorite um i would say that the ones i am uh mostly gravitating to whaley's or we made a double ipa that like seems like interesting for a non-alcoholic brewery to have a double ipa but it, this is the beer where um i felt like if you were comparing that to a regular um full octane ipa for lack of better words you'd be you'd be hard to tell the difference of it. Most of our beers, like the sour and the pilsner, are like they're so much that they're so similar to an alcoholic beer that that people are fooled all the time. But the hoppy beers are tougher because they're thicker, they're more caloric. And I think this one just has that density in it, even though it's relatively low in calories, it's under 0.5% that you know my wife had it and she's like, there's no way there's not alcohol in here. And and for me, my story, um, and it really helps curb my craving even more when it kind of tastes like an IPA that I used to have back in the day. That's one I actually have in my fridge right now, right before we recorded. I just ran to Bottles and Cans, which is a bottle shop near me, and I picked that up. I'm like, a double? All right, I I need to grab this one. Yeah, that was, that was interesting because it's like, you know, it's a double IPA in style, right? And just like anything, right? It was like, it's a German Pilsner in, in style like we're going for or, or whatever, you know, the, whatever beer we're going for. It's a, it's just within that uh, target style. And so, yeah, the double IPA obviously is not really double anything except for the hops, you know. So um, uh, that turned out to be uh, I, I the recipe itself, uh, I you know, going for something a little bit more flavorful as far as like body and, and kind of like that malt character. But I think just the combination of just kind of our favorite hops. Um, we use a different kind of hot product. So not just straight pellets, but we also use some of these advanced hot products, which are like, you know, um, extracts that, um, can just like, they're not really, they're, they're, they tend to be okay. a little more single note. So it's more of a, a top note on top of the pellets, but that's how we kind of doubled up on this, right? So we're able to like put on layers and layers and layers of, of hops. And like Joe said, like it got to that flavor of like this, this could be a, a two hearted or, you know, something from, um, uh, you know, Fruit Floyd's or whatever, it just has this really intense, um, hop character. But, uh, I, I keep forgetting about that. Cause I'd say like my, my favorite one's always been, uh, the Pilsner because that's just kind of, you know, the challenge that I kind of created for myself a long time ago. But, uh, I haven't been drinking the, <laughs> the double IPA because we just, we're running out of it, you know, but next to that would be, I guess, the sour for me. The double IPA that you use Citra and Mosaic in that, and I thought uh, there was Simcoe one more on the well. can, but I don't have a can in front of me right yeah. this second. Yeah, some some big popular, very Simcoe, flavorful okay. hops. Yeah, yeah. So if you're looking for an IPA, they're using all the same hops, all the same ingredients that you're going to get from a hop butcher or yep. anywhere else. There's just no alcohol in it. Yeah, that's right. And now it's it's been our one of our fastest selling beers in terms of velocity. We also are did a partner with the charity uh, Institute of Nonviolence 
Chicago and we're, we donated 10% of the beer sales uh, to that beer to help underserved neighborhoods in Chicago. So we're really proud of that. And it sold out in a month. So it's not even okay. available on our website. Um, every form I look at, it's getting rave reviews. So we're, we're trying to bring it back as fast as possible for any of those, those uh, listening. Cause it's, it's kind of a rear style too. Like there's not many, there's not many brewers making it. That leads up actually to my next question. When uh, the tap room itself looks phenomenal, wish I could have been there today, but my lower back has other thoughts about that. But the tap room looks really great. And you mentioned on the website, there's a lot of charitable things you do. It's not just the tap room. You have yoga and other types of events there. What type of events do you have at the tap room? We have live music every weekend. That's, that's a given. And we've had that since, since we've been, been open. And then typically once a week, if not once every other week, we'll have some sort of health related event. As you mentioned, yoga, we have that often. We'll have club, we have CrossFit style events, but we also do things with charities where you we let them use our stage here. We have a really nice stage. So we'll do things with storytelling. We have, uh, open mic nights. We have um, charity benefits here, so just a lot of that. And we're gonna we're gonna be opening something soon called Community Stage because we found that uh, you know if you think about maybe kids in school rock or like people that just want a stage and a place to go hang out at, but they can't really afford one. Or you know, I definitely knew know when I was younger, there was it was really hard to find something like that. So we're gonna open it up and 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 donate kind of the stage space, like maybe once or twice a month based on need and uh, see how that goes as well. So yeah, our, our mission's to not only make awesome beer, but it's to give back the best we can as well. Oh, that's awesome. Now, the website says you have snacks and pizza. It said the best frozen pizza out there. So how good is that pizza? It's pretty good. All right. Oh, that, that, oh I was just saying, I've seen people come into the bar and or, order the beer. They'll get a beer and then they'll ask to take a pizza home with them. So not even, not even like cook. They just want to take the oh, pizza sweet. with them. Yeah. What uh, different varieties of pizza do you have there? Yeah. It's just like kind of the ones that you, you'd expect. You got like an Alfredo. Then we have sausage, pepperoni. And the, the reality is like we're, we're not, we're not able to give in like zoning to have like a full kitchen here. Yeah. But the reality, the reality of it is like people like to eat when they're at a a brewery and not everyone likes to just order through Uber Eats. Um, so we wanted to come up with something and having grown up on the South side of Chicago and going to these taverns when I was way underage and I shouldn't have been there and having frozen pizzas at the bars uh, was just like just this memorable thing. So the nostalgic of bringing that back is pretty cool. Yeah, I remember <laughs> many times just, you know, burning the roof of my mouth yeah. from some tavern right? frozen yeah. pizza as a kid. And just, you know, washing it down with the Pepsi or whatever they decided to give you. A hundred percent. Do you also have food trucks or other things like that on weekends? The the cool thing is we're across the parking lot from Solomon's. And they have a phenomenal food truck program that, you know, we, our first like month here, we were like, okay, this is too complicated right now for us. And it's, it's, what's the complicated? to order a food truck. It's complicated to just make sure that we have the right traffic coming in here at the right time for the food truck. And we were just getting it wrong. And we're like, we got to focus on our beer and making our beer and shipping and, you know, all that other stuff. So we're like, let's just partner with Salamol. We'll use, you know, people are coming in here. They'll, they'll use, they'll go over there for their, their food. Cause we're literally like a hundred feet away. It's kind of silly to have two food trucks in our oh, yeah. parking lot as well. Your tap room, they're open Tuesday through Sunday. Normal hours, what time were your t- hours there? Noon till 8, Tuesday through Thursday, then noon till 10, Friday and Saturday, and then noon till 5 on Sundays. Okay. Now, you know, I mentioned I picked up stuff at bottles and cans, and in the city, you could grab it at your bottle shops, like Dermiscuous, Beer Temple. I've seen uh, it change stores like Binnie's. Are you available in any of the grocery stores like Jewel or Mariano's yet? Yeah, it's a great question. So we are, we just signed with our first distribution partner, New Liquid Beverage. So we are going to be definitely in stores coming this uh, fall and spring. And just like anything, it's going to start slow, but then ramp up. 
And we are uh, also in kind of the fifth yard line of signing with another distribution partner in the, in the prop, Chicago proper area. And then on top of that, we're, we're going to open up uh, likely three other states by the end of the year. So three other markets as well in the uh, Midwest area. That's cool. You mentioned shipping before and the PR person, mm-hmm. Madeline, that got a hold of me a couple of weeks ago, she mentioned that you sell on Amazon. Yeah, we do. So most of the business thus far has been online on our website at okay. com and on Amazon. Uh, we started with Amazon as a channel in March of this year, and we've nearly 10x the growth where Amazon's recommended pick on five of our styles. So if anyone's taking out their phone and want to wants to ch- check that, just put in gluten-free beer on, in Amazon and you'll see You'll see Freedom Cali Pale, which is a craft and without gluten beer that we made, show up as as Amazon's choice, which is pretty cool. So it's it's well, there's a really good kind of flywheel effect going on where people can see us on Amazon, people see some stores, people see some cap room, people see us online on our website, and they're buying through all these different places. And we also have a beer membership club where someone could mix and match a six pack and. Because the velocity of the beers that James has been able to create, it's no one gets bored. So you're not getting the same thing every month. You get a, a nice selection to choose from. Yeah, that mix pack sounds pretty good. What does it entail? You join at the uh, brew pub? Yeah, you, no, you just join online. So um, okay. you can go to our website and go to beer membership page. There's three different uh, tiers. The first tier is enthusiasts. So you can pick two six packs a month. Uh, you get free shipping. So if you're not in the area, we ship to almost every state in the U.S., our shipping process is really good. We ship out the next day. Uh, and then you get a 5% store discount. The second second tier is uh, Believer tier, and that's 10%. You get three six-packs, and the fourth is VIP. And then you get essentially a case a month, but you get to mix and match. You'll, you'll get an email before your order shipped out, and you get to change your selection every month. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I'll have to definitely look mm-hmm. into that. Joe, James, I thank you both for coming on. I really appreciate it. I can't wait. Later in the show, I'm going to bust open that double IPA. And I picked up that, uh, was it the Cali uh, one you just mentioned? So those are the two I picked Mm -hmm. up at Bottles and Cans. And later on in the show, I'll have a more in-depth review and put something up on YouTube. But I really thank you both for coming on. I can't wait to come down to Naperville and visit Go Brewing. Yeah, thank you very much. Let us know how you like yeah, those beers. Yeah, you anytime. Hey, I'm Pants Aaron. This is Stevie. And I'm Augie. And we are BFYTW, a podcast all about playing games and having fun. Our games are usually based on British panel shows and game shows, but we'll play anything that captures our attention and imagination. Why? It's right there in the title. You'll never guess what the F stands for. All right, the first of the Go Brewing beers I'm going to have is Freedom Cali Pale. This is not only a non-alcoholic beer, this is brewed without gluten, and they use Galaxy and Sultana hops. This is also going to be up over on YouTube, so if you want to see it, you could head over to YouTube. But let's crack this open. Freedom Cali Pale is a nice color. Good amber color to it. Smells good. I get the nice hop aroma here. No, that's a really good beverage, beer, if you will. They, because this is gluten free, so this has millet and buckwheat in this as opposed to your traditional grains. But I think this is good. I get nice malty flavors here, as well as the hops, which are great in any normal pale ale or IPA. I think this is really good. That's something I would drink all the time. I think this is a winner. So I'm looking forward to their double IPA that I'm going to have on the next segment. But I think this is good. So definitely check out Go Brewing. Get their Freedom Cali Pale I think this one's a winner, whether you go to the brewery or you pick it up locally or online. This is one I think you should definitely put in the cart. All right, the next Go Brewing beer I'm going to have is Double IPA. 
This is called Not Just Another Story, Double IPA. As you heard on the interview, they use Citra, Mosaic, and Simcoe hops here. I'm really looking forward to this after the way they were describing it, so let's crack it open. Beautiful color here. If you're watching on YouTube, you'd see it as a really nice dark amber color. And if you're watching on YouTube and you're saying, Dave, what the hell is with your tooth? I'm having some dental work done. I have a new tooth coming next week. So you think the Kardashians take a day off? No, they're always putting out content. So I'm looking ridiculous for you. But let's talk about the beer again. Really nice color. I love the aroma here. You really get the hop notes up front. I think this smells really good. That's really good. I get the the malt notes. It's got a little, trying to think, little crackery maybe. But I'm also getting the hop flavors here. I think this is really good. And this is something like the first one, the Cali Pale Ale. This is something I am definitely going to drink again. It's not going to be just a one-off for the show. I think this is really good. Yeah, definitely. I could see me picking up more. And for days that I just don't want to have like a regular beer, I could have this satisfy my craving for a beer and not you know, get a lousy night's sleep and all of the other bad things that happen when you drink too much beer. So I think Go Brewing is definitely a winner. You should definitely look this one up. If you find it, put it in the cart. It's that good. I wouldn't steer you wrong, but I think this one is excellent and is something I'm going to drink more of. That's going to wrap things up for this edition of Beer in Front. I thank you for listening. I want to thank again Joe Churro and James Bigler over at Go Brewing for coming on. Please check out their brewery at 1665 Quincy Avenue in Naperville, Illinois. If you'd like to get a hold of me, you can email me dave at beerinfront.com and on social media at Beer in Front, even Threads and Blue Sky. If you'd like to support the show or my damn tooth, you can head over to patreon.com slash beerinfront for more details. This AI voice won't be back next week. How do they take away my Chicago accent? Jay Goffs. Thanks again for listening. I'll talk to you next week. And remember, sometimes the beer in front of you is the best one yet. <laughs>